All right, today we're gonna to learn how to paint this painting in a style I call Metal Mayhem. All right, so the question of the day is, who is Clifford Steele? Today we're going to learn how to do an abstract painting in a style I call Metal Mayhem. I missed it part of the beginning, but you know that happens when you're taping sometimes. Um, we got some blue in here. We're using that kind of ultramarine. It's kind of a neutral blue, a very blue blue. I've got some burnt orange in here to add some contrast. It's going to be a blue painting, but you need some of that contrast reds or yellows or greens or something to contrast the blue. You can't just have a pure blue painting per se. So we've added in some kind of layering. Um, I've added a little bit of marks to kind of give it some definition in the next layer because those will pull through. Um, I can't go over those because it'll just smear. So we're going to leave those marks in there and we'll see what it looks like in the next layer. All right, we got those initial layer in. Um, we've added the white line is at the end. I think that's pretty dry. Some of these are a little wet, so I might tear those up a little bit, but I just want to get onto the next layer. Most of these are dry. It's only the really thick ones that might have a little bit of issues. So we'll just go on top of that. I'm going to add a lot more warmer colors because we're going to go back to the blue in the end. So I'm going to warm this painting up a little bit more with a little bit of yellow, kind of uh, golden colors, and kind of play with that orange to light color in between them in, in between those colors. And then we'll go back to the blue and really um, tone that down. white layer mixed in with a little bit of that golden color so it's got a really nice blend I toned it back here so it's not the pure um, orange this is gonna dry a little darker so we gotta kind of feel it out it's a mix of um, cad yellow a little bit of white so it's kind of really bright bright color and we want to kind of have that poking through to kind of contrast the blue as we pull back in the blue um, so right now it's a little bit touch and go. We'll see it's a very, very light color. So we got to add in some really darks to make that, those colors start to pop. We've added in a white to kind of tone down some of the areas. So give that a little bit more play back and forth. And so we'll add in those darker blues and see how that kind of pulls this back together as well as more probably the mid-tone oranges. And yeah, we'll see where it goes in the next layer. All right, we got that layer in with the white lines, got the yellow in here. Um, like we said, we're gonna add in the blue. So we're gonna add a kind of a quin blue to cool this down, get much more of the blue. This was a warmer blue underneath, so we're gonna use a very cool blue. And we're gonna mix that up, see where we go from there, and see what happens. <music> some of that darker blue we're gonna see how this dries it's gonna look a lot darker once this dries so we'll see if that's balanced enough right now it looks fine but 
you know, these tend to draw darker and then we're gonna see some of the layers underneath. So we'll see how that plays out. If we have enough bold patterns forming. I really like kind of this um, area here. I've kind of mixed it up with the white and the blue and the brown. So you kind of don't know where it started from. You guys obviously saw. So the video kind of takes some of the magic away, but and then I've had these outlines that kind of highlight, you know, the brush strokes or the metal strokes, <laughs> but kind of just suggest where they might've been before they got wiped out before. So it kind of has that like interplay and it creates more dynamic energy. I think going through the painting with these lines added in to kind of give it that subtle reference point of where that could have been or what was, and then it kind of got wiped out. So we'll see kind of, this doesn't feel resolved right now for me. Um, I don't know if I need a bark, darker brown pop in here or you know I did that white to kind of lighten it up um, we'll see how it dries and see how this plays out we might need to bring maybe the yellow over here maybe the red um, this is kind of feels isolated right now there's a big red a little bit here a little bit there a little bit there but there's primary red here and here so I don't know if this feels balanced maybe I need some more red up here again um, so we'll see if we do some more on this after this dries so Clifford Steele is an abstract expressionist uh, very famous he uh, became into the abstract expressionist before Rothko, before um, Jackson Pollock, actually in the late, I think I wanna say late 30s going into the 40s. And then he really met kind of his height in the 50s obviously with the other abstract expressionists. It's known for kind of these bright colors. Um, I'd almost say Indian colors because he did study for four summers at one of his universities, I think it was in Washington. Um, Indian portraiture so he brought a lot of those colors you get to see kind of this Indian yellow black red those really stark colors in his paintings and he uses kind of metal tools to kind of get those unique marks on the canvas itself and you know he studied all over he studied in New York and then he went back to Spokane uh, did his BA there and he went to another Washington University did his MFA there and then he eventually got to New York where he met Rothko and then he came back to San Francisco um, for a bit. And then at, you know, in the 60s, he just said that he cut all his ties with the galleries. It was really interesting because I'm kind of curious like how he sold his work. Did he just sell direct or what was the situation there? Um, kind of hard to know, but yeah, it's really interesting style. You can really see that Indian influence on the color scheme that he uses in, in his abstract works. And that's the question of the day. All right, we just finished the painting. Let's take a closer look. So I got this really nice bright yellows at the top, um, transition to blue over here, got a nice blue field over there. Um, and then it goes into this nice dark, uh, kind of chocolatey brown with a little bit of the orange peeking through on this side. Um, at the bottom here, we're gonna have um, more of that orange flavor. So it has a lot of really cool reds. There's a really strong orange element here with a uh, yellow in this corner. And it goes up into the brown, a little bit white in the middle and a lot of yellow highlights on this side as well to balance that other side. You know, I was thinking um, doing another layer, but I'm just, you know, carefully looking at this, you know, it's got good white to, um, white to dark balance, which is the values inside. If you switch it to a black and white photo, you can really check light to dark. And so you always want to balance painting that way. Has just a little touch of dark here and there. It's a pretty bright painting, so it's not, you know, I've done these in the past and they've been really dark. Um, so with acrylic, it's really easy to go too dark on the color scheme. So I think this works pretty well. It has a really light, airy feel to it. Has a lot of nice texture to it, a lot of different complex areas. Some areas are really simple, like this yellow on both sides are a little bit simple because it's just really that brown with a little white in it, not too much variation into it. But you need those kind of negative spaces where they're just not too much going on. There's a blue space over here. Uh, there's kind of a neutral brown area in the middle that's very light. So you want those kind of little tiny textures to kind of, you know, keep the calmness of the other areas. You got this nice grid, gritty gridlock that I added in with those lines that really make those features kind of pop and you don't know exactly where um, those elements start and stop. And yeah, I think, you know, it's overall pretty good. I was thinking originally of adding in those orange elements again to kind of make it pop, but you know, as I'm looking, the bottom has a really strong element. There's a little bit at the top and a little bit off to the corner. So it kind of has a nice triangle, I would say, composition wise. The yellow forms another type of composition with um, basically a triangle as well. And the blue is kind of, 
don't know what shape that is. Maybe it's a rectangle, <laughs> but it's a little bit everywhere. So it has like a little bit of blue. It wasn't quite as blue as I thought I would originally do the painting. Um, probably I could do another layer, make it more blue and it'd still work. But I like the balance between the red, the blue and the yellow. It's a little bit, you know, you get in the danger of being too rainbowish if you have those colors, but I like that color pop. I think it's a really strong painting. Um, you know, again, good values with that really light yellow, the really dark, dark red. But at the same time, you have kind of a little bit of blue darkness here and there. So that's really good. Uh, with that Quinn blue, it's a really nice dark blue on the cold side. And then once you add it on top of the orange, it kind of forms kind of maybe a purple on top of there. But you don't have much blend as far as the orange to the blue because I did the blue later. So that it just really, if it's translucent, it might come through and blend between the layers, but it doesn't blend in the paint. So that's kind of nice that those layers um, stand out against each other. And so, yeah, I think it's done. Hopefully you guys like it. Give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, you can subscribe below and uh, check out my Patreon account for the full version. And I'll see you in the next painting video, guys. Thanks.